To listen on Spotify, click the link below. All right, there's a lot of question out there about, you know, things that happen within society, especially, you know, this, this is something that I think a lot of white people need because not because we're more racist than anybody else. We just get just the, the consequences of us fucking up is so much harsher than other people because, uh, you know, we, we are the gold standard when it comes to racist. <laughs> we are in the driver's seat right now. We have been in the driver's seat for a while basically meaning that if we are ignorant assholes, it, it has way more effect than when other people are. You know, back in the day when other people were running shit, that's the thing. Whoever's on top, if you're thinking ignorant, uh, that's, that's why, you know, if you're on top and you're thinking ignorant shit, you have to be called on it because uh, just because the, the effect that you can have. You know what I mean? Like if somebody from Bangladesh fucking hates me, that's such a stupid example, Okay. That, that's not a race of people. I don't even know where Bangladesh is, and i got to be honest with you, I don't even know if that's a city or a country. Bangladesh. Have you ever seen that on uh, The Price is Right? You know, a showcase showdown. We're selling you to Bangladesh. And some white trash person like myself sits there with a confused look on their face like, I don't know where that is. Is that where the terrorists are? I don't want to go there. Whatever. Like if Filipino people fucking hate me, that doesn't affect my life. It doesn't. I'm not going to go into a job interview at, 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 you know, Walmart is not run by Filipinos. You know what I mean? You know, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with Filipinos. All right? See, see what I have to do with this white person? Don't say I'm saying anything bad about Filipinos. Just to be clear here. I have never had issues. I never have a blah, 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 blah. Fucking all that shit. You got to go to the Jerry Lewis voice there. Lady. Um, so, yeah, people have questions. So here we go. And I think all races should chime in. The questions that you have, if you have feelings about a different race of people and you just think uh, you're thinking something funny, there's nothing malicious, but is this offensive? Is it racist? This is this is the new topic, okay? And if you feel that I answer these questions like the ignorant white man that I am, uh, call me out on it. Um, here, So here we go. This first one. Uh, Bill, is it racist to call Indians dibu-dabus? And I'm talking about the Asian ones, not Native Americans. I'm, I'm guessing by... Dibba you mean dibba dabu? Dibba dabu, You're saying like that, dibba dabu. Um, is it racist? Probably, but it's fucking funny. So that knocks it down a little bit. This is what I feel that makes something like racist. It's like, like the reason why uh, that one isn't as offensive is because we haven't, we never enslaved them. That's the reason why white and black shit is so sensitive is because of the shit that we did to them but we haven't really fucked with those people you know so if the black version of that was is it is it offensive to call black people hey man motherfucker or whatever yes that would be offensive <laughs> if you did some sort of mocking of the way they spoke yes that would be that would be offensive if some ceo was giving a speech and I was driving, uh, actually, I was having someone else drive my town car. <laughs> and we drove by uh, a group of, uh, yo, motherfuckers. And uh, they proceeded to walk towards, yeah, you'd have to apologize. So I guess, yeah, I guess technically, like that would be, <laughs> that would be offensive. Is it racist? Um, this is what I, I really, I really, it's hard for me to say because it, it had, it's what's in your heart, you know? Because I make fuck, I really, I make fun of, of everybody, you know? I mean, I play a game out here uh, when someone is making, uh, let me ask you, I got a question for you. Is this racist? I have a game out here when I ride around with Nia, and she does not approve of this, to keep her in the clear. She does not approve of this. When somebody makes a moronic move in front of me, you know, driving, you know, just makes a fucking horrific move, I play a game called Old or Asian. <laughs> And you have to guess when, because I'm going to pass the person because I got to see what they look like. You know, whenever somebody does something fucked up, some comedians do a great joke about that. You just want to see what the fuck they look like, right? Uh, that's the game, old or Asian. So as I speed up my little hybrid to try to pull parallel to them, I always say, what do you say, Nia? What are you going with? Old or Asian? What do you got? Old or Asian? And she goes, I'm not playing this game. That's mean. And then I was going, I'm going to go with old. And then I pull up, oh, it's fucking Asian. You know, or, oh, I nailed it. It was an old guy. So um, is that racist? I'm sure it's offensive, but within the context of my own car, you know, I'm not yelling at it at anybody. And I got to admit, you know, there's a lot of truth in the fucking game. Oh, Jesus, I'm going to have to apologize next week on the podcast. So I would say 
that uh, uh, Indian people, why don't you chime in? I would say that, yeah, that they would find that, they would find that uh, offensive. Um, is it racist? Let me see if I can use it in a sentence here. Hey, uh, you know, I, I called up customer service and, uh, you know, one of those dubbas answered and tried to tell me that his name was Steve and act like he was in uh, Kentucky. But I, I, I know that he was actually in India because when he talked, he was going, dubba dubba, what? How can I help you? Um, is it racist? Probably. You know what? Something bad has to happen between white culture and uh, or, or Western culture and uh, Indians. So you know what I mean? It's like uh, it's like you're playing a team and there's no rivalry. Like Patriots versus Jets this year was like uh, whites and blacks. It was bad. It was a lot of hate, you know. But like Patriots versus like the fucking Lions, you know. Yeah, there's gonna be some shit talk. It's it's knocked out. But it still hurts if somebody says something mean. <laughs> I, don't, I really don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. All right, let's move to the next one. The next one on the new controversial topic on the Monday morning podcast. Is it racist? All right, here we go. Um, Bill, I had an interesting experience today, apparently involving me as a racist. I was walking with two of my coworkers who are both black. Oh, Jesus, here we go. Um, we were going to go get some lunch. One of my coworkers, who I'm also friends with, uh, uh, did a little high-five fist bump shuffle with one of the female sec security guards at the front desk. Knowing both of them and how they interact with one another, I kind of made a in-passing comment to the tune of, man, you guys and your handshakes, while obviously laughing, <coughs> laughing, while obviously laughing at just how choreographed it was and more or less picturing them in a studio or something, working out the logistics to get the fucking handshake perfect. Anyways, we all laughed and moved on, and we got our lunch. All right, so nothing wrong yet. So you're cool with these people. You made a joke, and everybody laughed. No problems. No problems so far. Um, however, after coming back through, secu uh, back through security, I noticed the security guard stopped me and kind of had a scowl on her face. I thought she was mad at me for something, but it turned out she was mad at this other lady who was black because she overheard my comment and was telling uh, that security guard that she couldn't believe I had the nerve to say something like that and I should be ashamed. Also to the point where she could, um, almost to the point where she could actually go cl complain to the human resource people because she was offended. Um, etc. without even considering that maybe, just maybe, I was talking about the security guard and my co-worker and not all black people. Now, it being corporate America and all, I'm sure rather than even face the poss possibility of any bad press, they'd rather just sweep me out the door and completely ruin my re any reputation I may or may not hold at the company just to save their own asses. I feel I did nothing wrong and had no intentions of ever doing anything wrong. Anything wrong. I'm not going to go on and on about how I kiss black babies and try to rehabilitate inner city schools because I don't. But I'm certainly not some corn-fed, rebel flag-waving, ignorant product of what might be incest. I guess my question is, do we really have to walk on eggshells when we are just making casual conversation that just any, that just any cunt can pick apart, select the context that they might think it is in, and then start crying foul? Basically, I would have liked to call that woman a cunt and told her to go fuck herself, but let's just say I was already kind of worried about my job. All right. See? Um, yeah, I think this is, this is the classic one where you were fucking around. The other two people knew you were fucking around, but then one person just decides to get offended, and then you have to go on TV and apologize, which personally I think is the wrong move because when you apologize, now it's like you're, you're admitting that you meant it in a bad way. I mean, the apology I would do there would say, look, you know, I'm sorry that you didn't understand that I was joking, but I'm not going to sit here and apologize like I have any, any sort of ill will coming your way, you know. But, I, but just to avoid the problem in the future, uh, white people, do not use the expression you guys or you people <laughs> when talking about black people. That's just, it, it's just not going to – you're setting yourself up for someone to get offended and um, – there's a weird sort of uh, 
push-pull going on with that whole uh, you guys and you people thing, where um, when somebody white says that, there becomes this concern of um, <clears throat> that you're separating. You're separating. Like, yeah, you know, you people over there with how you live your lives and we're over here. Black people have that weird relationship with white people where they're like, you know, can you stop stealing our fucking music in our culture? And, but then, like, if something, you know, hey, let's pave the streets, you know? Well, make sure you do it in our neighborhood. We're all in this together, right? All of us together. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's that weird sort of fucking push-pull thing going on. So, yeah, just avoid uh, avoid the whole fucking, um, yeah, you fucked up. You didn't fuck up, but you, you left yourself open for a sucker punch by saying you guys. You know, uh, that's, I guess that that's what it is. I don't know. That's, that's, that's my, I'm basically a white guy telling a white guy how he fucked up. So black people, if you're listening to this thing. Uh, please, please help me out here. Did I basically get it right? Is that essentially it? And I know most people wouldn't get offended. All right, so there you go. That's the new. That's the new topic. Is it racist? And I would love to hear um, some honest comments from uh, non-white people about their thoughts. You know, the fucked up ones too. Okay. Because I've watched enough Spike Lee movies to think that evidently it's just us. But I've hung around enough people from different races to realize, oh yeah. Everybody's like this. Wrote in to ask me if they thought that this, if, if this was like a racist game. They said, Bill, I'd like to play a little game similar to your Asian or old person driving game, except my game involves the, the evening news. It's called Beaner, Black Guy, or Crazy Ass Cracker. Just to clarify, I am Hispanic, parentheses, Latino, Mexican, or whatever other dumbass term someone has come up with. So saying Beaner is okay. See, now this is why I wanted to do this segment. This is the exact fucking reason. Okay, he says beaner, black guy, and cracker. All right, and he goes, I can say beaner because I'm Mexican. Well, then why can you say cracker ass cracker? Right? It's because I'm white, and no one gives a fuck about that one. See what I'm saying? This is something that I learned from doing stand up in front of all different kinds of people. That's what I learned. I learned that everybody basically, it's not that they're selfish. They they just they look out of their own head. You can't help but do that. So you just see shit from your own perspective. Like one night I was doing this gig, right? down at the old Boston Comedy Club in New York City. And one of the acts that was going up was this, uh, was this, I think I told this story before. It was, a, it was a comedy team. It was this Asian guy and girl. And they went up there and they did this fucking rap. Okay? And they went up there and they stuck their teeth out like they had buck teeth. And then they put, you know those glasses that you can put on those joke ones that make your eyes look Asian? They had those, they're Asian and yet they still put those on. And then the other guy had on a, a, a fake gold chain with a fucking fortune cookie hanging off the thing. So I'm sitting there looking at them before they're going up, going, oh, man, this isn't going to fly. This isn't going to fly with this fucking crowd. This is basically, uh, what do you call that shit? What, what was that shit back in the day in old-time Hollywood? It was almost like Asian blackface. Like what they were doing was fucking was ridiculous. So I was thinking that black people watching it were going to be like, just all the shit that they've been through would look at it and be like, what the, why are they, these fucking, why are they selling out their own fucking race? This is horrific. This is fucking horrific. And they didn't. That act went up there and they fucking destroyed and everybody laughed their balls off. They thought the fortune cookie thing was fucking hilarious. And I was just like, yeah, be, well, I don't know. Maybe it's because they're shitting on their own race. What the fuck are you supposed to do? I don't know. I just found that shit fascinating. So uh, does that pertain to what the fuck I just said? I don't know. This cold medicine's kicking in. Let me finish this. So anyways, this is basically what this guy does. He says, uh, uh, just to clarify. Okay, now this game started because I hate watching the news. And no matter what I'm watching, Sports Center usually, my wife will want to change it. Um, so naturally, being the asshole that I am, I had to figure out a way to ruin it for her. Um, so what I do is turn away from the news whenever they begin, begin explaining the crimes or events of the day. Based on the description of the crime or event and how it was committed or performed, I yell either beaner, black guy, or crazy-ass cracker. Dude, that actually sounds like a fun fucking game. Well, I wouldn't say crazy-ass cracker. I would just say fucking white dude. Um, example, news report says, would I say beaner? No, I wouldn't. That's one of the worst ones ever. Beaner. It's got no ring. It's got no flow. That must have been a bad day with white people. You know, usually we're a lot more creative than that. You know, name me after a fucking vegetable. Is it a vegetable? Is it a fruit? What the fuck is it? I don't fucking know. Anyways, 
plowhead. Example, news reporter says, a man was stabbed, and I yell out, beaner. I know it's a beaner because we Mexicans can't afford guns and still pay for our illegal extended family members we have living with us in our two-bedroom house. If the news report says a drive-by shooting, I yell, black guy. Come on, do I really have to explain the reason behind that one? And, of course, if I hear the suspect had body parts of his victims in the refrigerator, fucking crazy-ass cracker. It's because of this game that my wife has stopped watching the news altogether, and I now have peace and quiet to enjoy my top plays of the day fix on Sports Center. Well, good for you. Good for you. Now, see, that's something I don't. I don't think that that's racist, because what you you don't have any hatred towards any of those groups. What you're doing is you're actually. You don't want to watch the news. It's fucking depressing. You want to watch sports, and then she puts on a bunch of depressing shit. And what are you gonna do? Sit there and get depressed, or are you gonna fucking entertain yourself? So you turn it into a fucking game. It's actually a, uh, you know, I'm not offended by it. I think that's fucking funny. And there's a lot of truth to it. Um, oh, here's a guy responding to the Dibba Dubba. Um, is that racist? Um, anyway, so yeah, Indians aren't big white people fans because the British controlled their country for hundreds of years. See that once again. See, we all can make ignorant statements. So then you should hate the English. Why do you hate all white people? See that? We're all just as dumb. Oh, God damn it. This, this, is, this is enjoyable. All right, let's plow ahead here. Something I, I, I remember reading about this. I'm going to give you a vague description of what I remember. This is classic for my podcast because nobody knows what the fuck they're talking about. See this? This is how we're all coming together. Um, yeah, the British were fucking over the Indian people, and Indian people did something. They finally fucking snapped, and they went off, and they did something really violent to uh, some of the British people who were over there, including women and children, I believe. And uh, they went, say, you know, we'll say one to ten evil. They went about five. And then England said, oh, yeah, we'll fucking show you what evil is. And then they came back and they went 15. They were, like, fucking burning people alive. They just went around just just shooting everybody, Um, which is what you have to do when you fucking occupy a country. You have to commit fucking genocide. That's the only way, which is why you shouldn't do it. You know, it's why you shouldn't fucking invade another country because they ain't fucking leaving. They ain't fucking leaving. So I don't know what the fuck. You know what? This is like that's part of a whole nother big dis- uh, discussion. I shouldn't even have fucking brought it up. But the only occupation I've ever seen that ever fucking worked was in this country. And the reason why it worked was because we weren't leaving and we fucking committed genocide. That's the reason. And I'm not for that on any fucking level, which is why when I look around the world, And I see certain people in certain areas. I'm not surprised with what the fuck's going down, because that's what always goes down. It's what always fucking goes down. It's fucking, uh, I don't know. It's fucking, it's evil. It's pure fucking evil. Um, Right there. Right there. Okay, here's a couple of revenge stories. Um, All right, Bill, saw you at the Stress Factory. You're the only white guy I've paid to see there. Great. Uh, Thank you. I think. I love when black guys say that. You know, you're the funniest white boy I've ever seen. Uh, thanks. Usually, I think you guys suck. Yeah, just openly. Oh, shit. Somebody dropped the fucking N-word. First time. First time this year. Somebody dropped the N-word to me after one of my shows. You guys ever see that bit I did about being in Nashville? And that guy dropped the, the N-word out of fucking nowhere. And he didn't even look around. He said it like he was saying the word like chair or something. And I got all fucking panicked and I didn't know what to do. Every once in a while, that happened to me in Tennessee, Nashville, Tennessee, Raleigh, North Carolina, and now uh, Tampa. This is all over the last, like, four years. So this time, uh, it was after one of my shows, this dumb broad who wouldn't shut the fuck up the whole show, and she kept standing up, and she had blonde hair that was sort of like a short haircut, and so she ended up looking like Glenn Close in The Natural. She kept standing up. And uh, so at the end of the show, she had to come out to me. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think you're funny. She's all fucking drunk. I'm like, okay, sweetheart. Okay. And, like, you know, I'm selling my DVDs. And as she would go to the left of the table, I would go around to the right, you know, and then she'd go to the right, I'd go to the left. I'm basically keeping a piece of furniture in between us because, you know, those fucking girls, when they get drunk and they come up with that red wine breath, it's fucking horrific, you know? So she comes up to me. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. I'm glad. I, I get it. You had a good time. You weren't trying to disrupt the show, even though I told you to shut the fuck up 15 times. I get it. She goes, no, you don't understand. You don't understand. You, you're one of my favorite comedians. I like you, and I like Cat Williams, even though he's a N-word. <laughs> I just looked at her. I go, 
did you just say? And then she looked at me. I go, all right, you have a good night. And I just walked away. That's my new thing I do. The first time, when it first used to happen, I used to kind of stare at the floor with my eyebrows up, not looking at them like, okay, what the fuck? This is really happening. And then I went through this middle phase of trying to uh, change the person's views, trying to tell them why they shouldn't say it. And I realized that's a fucking waste of time. You know what I mean? Like, I, like you have to, like, fuck, I mean, this, it's like the person was, like, 14 or 15 saying it, and they had hope. This person was, like, pushing 40. It's over, you know? That's like, yeah, fucking America right now. We think we're going to go into Iraq and drop some fucking Starbucks and cheesecake factories over there, and those people are going to stop. And it's over. They're, not, they, they're, they're doing what the fuck they're doing. They don't like each other, and we should let them just fucking work it out. So I just look at those. I just, now I just go, like, I, I just clarify what they say. Did you just say this? And they either say yes or just look at me, and I just walk away from them. Uh, so I walk away, and then I'm talking to somebody else, and then all of a sudden she comes staggering up again. Oh, wait, wait. You don't understand. You, you don't understand. And I said, ma'am, I'm done talking to you. Seriously, I'm done talking to you. Walk away. So um, I don't know. I know she's going to wake up this morning, and I'm going to be the asshole. I had a couple of those. I have a lot of problems with women down here in Tampa. I had another girl. Uh, she was just drunk and pissed. She comes walking up to the table. Are you, are you fucking selling a fucking DVD? I gotta fucking buy one. You already fucking have it. And I'm just like, ma'am, you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. What the fuck? My fucking husband wants me to fucking buy a fucking thing. So, and then she was doing that whole thing, coming around to the back. If I can just establish one thing I would love to establish after my shows is if somehow I could get people to respect the other side of the table. You know? I don't mind people come around, they want to take a picture. But the people who come around, people who, who you don't mind coming up to you, never come up to you. They all walk out the door. And then they send you a text. I was going to say hi, but I was shy. Sorry. But the fucking drunks who come up with spittle coming out of their mouth, they just they got to walk right up to your face. What's that Seinfeld? The close talkers? That's what they end up doing. I don't even remember what to, I'm, you know, I'm not even drinking. I can't even remember what the fuck happened last night because it's high voltage tower. I don't know. She just kept coming up to me and she kept cursing. I'm like, all right, lady. All right. And she goes, no, no, I'm sorry. You come over here and hug me. It's like, no, get away from me. And then she starts putting her fucking hands on me, you know, and it's just like, you know something, you fucking twat. I don't want you fucking touching me right now. Okay, but you don't give a shit because you're a woman and I'm a guy and this, and it's okay for you to do that. It's not considered anything. If I do it to you, it's fucking some sort of harassment, right? Your fucking, get your fucking drunk ass hands off of me. You're, 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 you're a sloppy mess. Get away from me. You know what I'm doing? I want to put my hand right on her fucking forehead. You know? And right as she reached up to fucking remove my hand, I gave her that little uh, to her head, make that head snap back a little bit. And as, right as it was registering that I made her head snap back, I would then, like, like Chuck Norris, swiftly move to the exact opposite side of the tables. Because then I know, I know she'd get mad and then start flailing. Oh, my God, you just fucking slapped me in the fucking head? Yes, I did, you drunk cunt. Buy a DVD or don't buy a DVD. But don't fucking, don't come up and start fucking cursing me out. I'm not telling you you got to buy the thing. You fucking twat. Beat it. All right. So I got one more show here in Tampa. <laughs> uh, that didn't even make sense. All right, Bill. Hey, Bill, I'm 24 and have four kids. Jesus Christ. What is that, the fucking 1800s? What do you, what do you got? What do you got? Some fucking, you need some farmhand, sir? Somebody go clean out the silo or fill it up? Oh, good Lord. You guys make your own clothes? I'm 24 and I have four kids. I'm married. I feel bad for this guy. I should make fun of him. I work for public utilities doing very hard manual labor. And I work hard for my money, which goes straight to my wife and four kids. Basically, when politicians run for office and they try to stand on the shoulders of hardworking Americans, this is the guy right here. This is the guy that, like, Sam Elliott talks about. Speaking of that, I recently saw one of those Coors commercials. Have you seen that? The Rocky Mountains go down this country like a backbone. And we make our beer the way the fuck we want to, and that's what having a backbone is all about. you got to have a backbone to make a light beer that looks and tastes like piss. A watered-down, shitty beer that comes from the backbone Rocky Mountains. You know something? I think whenever you have a pussy product... You know, one of the red flags is you get Sam Elliott to do the voiceover, you know, because you're like, oh, my God, people are going to see right through the fact that, I mean, come on, people, Coors, it's one of those beers when, like, you're hungover that you actually drink. That's like vitamin water for an alcoholic. 
and they're trying to tie it into the fucking Rocky Mountains. I mean, I know, I know they, they get their fucking water from the Rocky Mountains. Go down this country like a backbone. Tough guy shit. Uh, give me some of that skull bandit. Uh, poor lad. Oh, Jesus. Um, anyways. Where the fuck am I? How the fuck did I even start talking about that? The other day I got a call from work. Uh, the other day I, I got a call from her. Okay, let, let's, 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 let's reset this up again. The guy's 24 years old. He has 17 kids. No, he has four kids. He's married, works for public utilities, does very hard manual labor. He works his fucking ass off and all his money goes straight to his fucking wife and his kids. All right, the other day I got a call from her at work and she told me to meet her at the doctor's office because she doesn't like taking the kids to the doctor alone. When I get there, she starts yelling at me as usual, red flag, and, they, and then said... Then she said, all you know how to do is work. So why don't you just go back to work? And saying, all I do is pick up after you and the kids. And basically calling me a loser for working and making money. I'm doing my best to provide for my kids. She takes my money. She spends my money on stupid shit. We've been married for a year and four months now. But you got four kids. Did you have quadruplets, sir? What happened? I don't know, Bill. I'd just like to hear your take on the situation and give me some advice. All right. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Here we go. All right. All right. First things first. I don't know what you said before she said, all you know how to do is work, so why don't you go back to work? That could have been anything from her actually being a jerk to her saying, yeah, Philip has a cold, and you said, uh, yeah, uh, which one's Philip? We got so many fucking kids. Which one? Which one is he? Is he, is he the little uh, rusty-haired one? And then she, ah, oh, well, you know how to do his work. Why don't you go back to work? You know, if she said it like that, then what can you do? Um, but it doesn't seem, I don't know, the fact that she's saying all I do is pick up after you and the kids. Uh, this is what you need to do. The worst thing that you can do um, when you want somebody to hear your point is to be a fucking asshole like me. It's like when I, when I approached that lady at the bank, you know, I, I, she didn't hear what I was saying because, A, she's, you know, a, she's a cunt. All right, who's kidding who? But beyond that was I was a dick to her. So no one's going to listen to you if you're a dick. So if you really, if you want to stay with this woman, right, if you're going through a rough period in your relationship, what you have to do is you got to walk away from that situation, you know, Go scream into a pillow all the shit that you want to say to her or go yell at your windshield as you drive around the block 15 fucking times. A couple of drinks, whatever you got to do. Unwind. And this is how I do it because I have a brutal temper. And just write down on a piece of paper what you want to fucking convey. All right? And then practice it. I know this sounds crazy to, to people who don't have this problem, but that's what I have to do because I, I'll sit there. And like that bank thing, I, 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 if I, I tried to practice it. My first attempt at practicing, I would start off slow and eventually get pissed <clears throat> all over again. I'd be like, hey, listen, I noticed that when you went in, you know, you opened your car door into my car, and then you came out, and then you did it again, and it's like, what the fuck? You know, okay, wait, no, no, I can't do that. All right, start over, Bill. And each time I would get further and further to the end. So that's what you have to do with this person. You, you, you have to sit down. Hour and 12 minutes. How fucking long is this podcast? You have to sit down with her and just be like, look. I mean, I don't know what you're, you're – just say, listen, we have four kids. That's the situation. You know, the place is going to be a mess, and I am working. Okay, obviously, I'm not giving you what you need. What, what more do you need from me? Okay? Let her – that's a, probably a good way. All right, we need to talk. You seem really upset with me, blah, 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 blah. What more do you need from me than what I'm doing? All right? Since she sees that you're relaxed, you're going to hear what the hell she wants to say. Then when she says what she has to say, you know – Fair enough. All right. Here's, here's what I need from you. All right. And then in a nice way, you got to tell her to stop spending all your money on stupid shit. All right. That's what you got to do. And I'm telling you, the key when you're fucking trying to make some headway in your relationship is with the woman is you can't lose your fucking cool. All right. And they will, if, if you back them into a corner sometimes when they're doing something wrong, because they're humans, they're going to do something wrong. When you back them into the corner and they did something wrong, watch out if they start attacking you. All right. With shit that has nothing to do with what you're arguing about. Like you're arguing about, you know, you know, whatever. Like you, you fucking, um, she keeps leaving the TV on and going to bed and it's on all night. And she's fucking whatever. 
whatever the fuck that debt causes, the, the electric bill to go up. If all of a sudden she starts going, well, you know, you're just mad because you're, you know, you're just short or she attacks you for that or some other bullshit or just you're just a fucking asshole right there. She just abandoned her argument. And what she's doing now is she's just trying to make you mad so that she can steer the argument into some other bullshit or just ho hopefully get you to say something so fucked up that it, uh, it just totally camouflages, you know, the bullshit that she did to start the fucking argument, basically. So just keep it cool. You got to sit down. You got to do you got four girl. You got four kids with this with this girl. You, you, you're attached at the hip with this woman. OK, so what you want to do is try to have a good time. You're a good guy. You're working your fucking ass off. OK. She needs to appreciate that, and uh, she has to appreciate that, you know, uh, you know, what do you want to do? You want to fucking whatever the fuck you're doing, you don't want to walk around picking up uh, SpongeBob SquarePants stuffed animals all day, you know? You got to be like, sweetheart, you had four fucking kids. See, this is why I'm not good at it. Sweetheart, you had four fucking kids. The fuck do you think was going to happen? You know, get your tubes tied. Quit bitching at me. See, that's the first pass. That's the first way I would say it. <laughs> And by you get to the end, you just say, listen, you know, I love you. You love me. We have four beautiful kids. We have to work together. It's definitely a trying time being this young with all these kids, but blah, 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 blah. And I'm telling you, your, your, your life will be like, it'll be better. It'll be better if you work it out. But the worst thing you want to do is come at her after you've had a few pops and said, listen, let me tell you something, you dumb cunt. All right? I'm the backbone of this fucking country. You don't want to come at her that way. All right? You stupid bitch. I'm fucking working my balls off. Why don't you go out there on that goddamn fucking oil rig all day? You know? Why don't you go down to the pharmacy and get on the fucking pill? Maybe you wouldn't have to be picking up so much shit, all right? Or they'll let me know to pull out. You'd say dumb shit like that, you know, and then you're going to have a fucking horrific relationship. You don't want to do that. So that's it. That's the podcast for this week, everybody. And My grandmother's going to be 99 in October, and she still dressed. That's good. She still Why? Drives. Why? Is she still fuck? I think when she was like 75. <laughs> yeah, then that would be impressive. <laughs> you know, like, you know, 99, that's not impressive. You know what that's like? No, it is That's isn't. like handing a child a loaded gun and going, he's had it for four days and hasn't shot himself yet. No, it's not. See, the kid scenario is funnier. Not, hold on. We got it. <laughs> that's not true, though. She has over 75 years of driving experience. That doesn't chalk up to experience. Jimmy's Are on, you joking? I don't ride with her. Jimmy's on to drive. something here, though. Ooh. We all have an old relative that we brag about. Mine was a great aunt. She finally passed at 101, and I used to say, and she lives alone. She still lives alone, and she goes shopping right. at the corner. And you're like, that was the second half of my story. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, we all do it. She still does ball. I think it's because she plays bridge. That but, keeps her mind so Yeah, strong. But we all do that. We have that relative we brag about. Right. Jimmy I'm, hit it right on the head. Really impress us. Does she still fuck? Does she still, like, skydive? Does she still do real shit? I'll bet you she still gives rides to, like, like she's probably a nice lady. And she'll oh, probably no, still no. pick up a hitchhiker occasionally. And pull over and suck his cock. <laughs> I mean, I'm oh, not trying Jimmy, to be disrespectful. Jimmy, that's, that's, oh, that's my grandma. No, no disrespect. That's my right. right. grandma. She's, no she's, disrespect. She's a woman. More importantly. <laughs> well, how would she get that done, though, Jimmy? If, if, you know, we're just talking about someone's grandma. She'd probably be driving along and, oh, look at the young man. Looks like my grandson. <laughs> he probably <laughs> should be the walking. radio in the car. <laughs> it's going to Jimmy, rain. Jimmy, don't do that to me. I don't want to picture my grandmother blowing me. She pulls over. Oh, And God. the young guy gets in and she talks and says, my grandson looks like you. He he tells jokes. He's on TV. Oh, oh, He's very funny. <laughs> Young man, why are you looking at me and rubbing your crotch? <laughs> what can I do for you? Let me tickle your bippy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens. Fast forward five they're minutes bone, later. Their bony old hand. The car is, knuckles coming at the you. The car is pulled over. The teeth are on the fucking the dashboard. The baker is pulled over. The teeth are on the dashboard. <laughs> and the, the, the two fingers are working the balls and asshole. <laughs> and this is the noise you hear as the hitchhiker's head pushes that head onto the cop. <laughs> Uh, uh. You have to let me up to breathe. My sinuses aren't what they used to be. Oh, shit. My grandson's on television. <laughs> Why are you doing this? That's horrible. He's right. It really yeah. isn't. It's funny, and I don't give a fuck. I don't mean, Bill. I'm just saying in general. Yeah. We're all sick of hearing how great your old relative. Is. I never said she was great. You're I was like, going to start you like, her. And she still drives. No, but I didn't. we all do it. I never did. I didn't go, and she still drives. I go, and she still drives. She still drives. We all do it. You know, I keep Line of the day, but does she claws with mucus. <laughs> <laughs> not only does she fuck, but she looks back over the shoulder and taunts you if it's not hard enough. 99 years young. Fuck me harder. She wants a hard cock. Comes out just covered with baby powder paste. <laughs> look, at, look at this ass. That's right. I'm 99 years old. <laughs> she can't oh. get wet anymore. She has to rub her armpit to get sweat and rub it on her pussy. Oh, my God. I mean, I'm just... I no disrespect. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I just want to make it official. Uh, I'm out.
Oh, is that disgusting? <laughs> Rub a little armpit sweat, huh? Yeah. You know all the fucking games. Right, as the hitchhiker receives his cock sucking. Oh, God. <laughs> I can't look at Bill. Why don't no. we do this break on CBS? <laughs> yeah. Just wanted to fly. Oh, wow. You all right, Bill? Uh, no, I'm good about blocking out my emotions. <laughs> I know. Six years from now, Bill's just going to walk up and knock my teeth out. Well, he <laughs> should. Hey, Bill. Focus. <laughs> That's the sound it makes when Bill's fist hits my teeth. <laughs> it's a new sound. Frankus. Frankus. And your head has to come up. If your head doesn't come up, you've done it wrong. Oh, wow. Reliable. Well, there's a lot of questions coming in about Billy's grandma. I just read it. Is there? Mike from Vancouver oh. wants to know if uh, Billy's grandma oh. is a size queen. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I just a what? A size queen, you know. What is that? It means that she prefers a bigger, girthier <laughs> big, cock. Big, fat one. <laughs> like a small, like she only they gets all, all just, just goes after big ones. But though. she like, a size queen means like, when, when she sees a, like a cock, it's fine. <laughs> but if it's a two-fister, <laughs> if she can get two hands around it and get the, the fucking mushroom head in her mouth, she appreciates a bigger cock. <laughs> I think they all do. Scarecrow from Jersey, can you imagine how the dentures of an 80-year-old cocksucker smells when it's roasting on the dashboard? <laughs> Not as bad as the dentures of one who's 99. That's almost 20 years more of cocksucking. And she still drives. <laughs> how about that? She still, you guys, you know, sucking a dick at 99 is not nearly as impressive as still driving. <laughs> no? No, it isn't. Gotta give that a little thought. All she, all she gotta do is fall forward. <laughs> the armpit line made me drool on myself. That's coming in from Whack Bag. Uh, Please do the same to her. Oh my god. No. That is hilarious. No. no. All right. I'm not trying to My grandmother is not a whore. I'm not trying to say no. that. She doesn't, no, no, she no, doesn't no. pick up hitchhikers. Well, let's, you know, Hump X writes. Uh, my 80. Oh, God, is it updating fast today? That's good. That means uh, people are listening. My 82 year old mom drove just fine until she plowed into a parked car, which she, which she swore moved out in front of her. Say? She should have just stayed home and sucked a cock that day. Wow. <laughs> hmm. Does Bill's grandmother enjoy scat? <laughs> <laughs> Bill from Waterford. She asked for it because she thought it was like when you sing a shooby doo a doo wop a doo wop. She like said, "I scat man." <laughs> yeah. She's like, "I want some scat," and then the meter man shit in her mouth. <laughs> wow. yeah. Do you like scat? Yeah, I, I love Louis Armstrong. <laughs> Great, this is gonna be the color of it. Bow. So he laid her back and put something that looked like Louis Armstrong's leg on her face. <laughs> This is all fun, but we're all going to have to be outside oh. in the bright sunlight. That's when it gets to us. Yeah. It isn't even that How bad. How awful we the really walk. are. It's not that bad. It's walk very shame. simple. We got their urgent communique. All those Christmas hugs. No, no. Just trying to figure out what to do next. We, we take a break. comedy premises in the, in the business. <laughs> old people fucking. We've latched onto it. But it's not yeah. old people fucking. It's, it's, it's an old person being my fucked grandmother. hard by the young. <laughs> it's my grandmother, too. By the young. Not even fuck, being deep-dicked. <laughs> That's what a size queen wants. She wants to be deep dicked. Well, it gets it gets worse. Ass wipe. <laughs> hey guys, I gotta tell you about this time I fucked a lady that's 69 years old. Uh, I'm a truck driver, and uh, of course you are. Of course you are. Exactly. <laughs> Wait, how old were you at the time? <laughs> His blow up doll is 30. <laughs> so about 30. <laughs> about 30. So 39 years oh, older. <laughs> and she, uh, we can't fire anybody because that's age discrimination. And so they put her with me. And I'm laying in my bunk, and I feel her pull over. She comes back there, and she starts laying down with me. Next thing you know, she's rubbing my cock, and it's been a while. And so uh, I gave in and let her rub my cock, and I ended up fucking her. Oh, God, I can't believe I just told you this. Anyway, see ya. 69 years old. Uh, I could see going with the hand job and kind of looking the other way and thinking about someone born. Uh, that gnarly no, that old old charm bracelet noise. <laughs> <laughs> a grandchildren charm. <laughs> I have it's eight grandchildren. It's actually a rosary. <laughs> shinka, 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 shinka. She's trying to spit in her, she's trying to spit in her hand and like particles of food are coming out. Oh, oh God. Hurry up, just jerk me off. Used to be relevant. <laughs> she spit out a chunk of denture grip and it sticks to your cock. <laughs> She's wearing I like Ike panties. <laughs> when, when she sucks your dick, she leans up and asks you if you could reach around and finger her bippy. <laughs> she likes that. The, the bippy. Give the old bippy a fingering. Oh. oh. There is nothing sexy about fucking the old. No. Not nothing. At all. 
Uh, this conversation is really not hot. Yeah, good deep fuck. <laughs> good womb buster. Give her a good womb busting. A womb busting? I think it's long uh, gone. Well, the listeners are loving it because we just crashed in some feedback. They all have questions oh, about done. Bill's grandma. <laughs> they want to know if she's snowballing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not right. Oh, Dude, they're just vicious. I can't oh, read them. I one time sucked the cum out of Agnes's pussy and then kissed her. <laughs> oh, we we had a foursome with oh. Gus and Elmer. <laughs> Elmer. Oh. Uh. Uh. Oh, Did he 69, the 69-year-old? I'm so glad. No, none of my relatives on that side of the family have an XM. What, what, what are you laughing at? Jimmy from Wagbag, her asshole must look like a brown scrunchie. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, is that horrible? Uh, wow. Oh, God. All right. Damn Who it. I thought such an innocent comment could just... <laughs> yeah. I know. She's hey, terrifying. she's uh, 99 and she uh, can still drive. And turns into... Yeah, I was going to make fun of because she drove the car through the garage. And next thing you know, I'm picturing what her asshole looks like. <laughs> yeah. You know. She'll be celebrating her 100th birthday with a pair of non-white balls on her face. <laughs> <laughs> Not black, yet some type of a brownish hue. <laughs> I imagine that would be much better than blowing out a cake with a hundred candles. Perhaps Ecuadorian, the Ecuadorian landscaper. <laughs> fucking awful onion balls. Go ahead, put them in your mouth. <laughs> Isn't she fucking Carlos Mencia? I work in the TV industry. I'm the I know famous. what you're thinking. <laughs> oh, God damn. You finally gave a beaner a load. <laughs> Now, let's say hi to Eric in Colorado as we try to move on here. Eric? Yes, uh, I, I believe for anyone interested that uh, with a wild sticker, Bill's grandmother will be flashing at his show at the Comedy Works in Denver, July 27th, 28th, and 29th. Ooh. For ticket information, contact www.comedyworks.com or myspace.com slash Bill Burr. Yeah, all his dates are up on his MySpace account. Comedy Connection this weekend, that's a biggie for Bill. Nah, I'll be, I'll be oh, back. you're from Boston. It's first time you're headlining. That's huge for Bill Burr. Mm. I'm taking the weekend off after this segment. Yeah. yeah. Oh, all right. Not going out. I don't have to have that men in black thing flashed in front of my eyes. <laughs> so you forget? Yes. Uh, flash it in front of your eyes so next time you see your grandma, it's not the first thing that pops in your head? Yeah. It's all the awful <laughs> things that are being said. You're not going to look for body language signals when she's hugging you? <laughs> does she press a little too close? Does she Instead of like giving you the grandmother hug, does she wrap her arms around your waist, pull you in? Jimmy, for the love of God. <laughs> well, Humpax... Just stop. Humpax <laughs> wants to know... Would Bill's grandma consider a DP session? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like her motto. If you're going to have one in the pussy, you might as well have one in the asshole. And then she puts her fingers over her mouth and goes, Did I say that, Dolores? <laughs> <laughs> Once again, for the love of God, Jimmy. <laughs> Two yellow fingernails over the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Frank the trucker. Frank. <laughs> Fucking under an Afghan. <laughs> <laughs> I had to fuck my landlord because I couldn't pay the rent. I was too much behind. She's like 89, 90 years old, man. I had to do it. Hey, Frank, Frank's, Frank's laboratory oh. story, but basically he had to fuck his landlord, and she was real old. Oh, Wasn't the, that in Kingpin? Yeah. Yeah, I think, that's, I think he stole that. All the young guys like to fuck the old 99-year-old because she's a cheap date. After you fuck her, you just got to give her some Alpo and tell her something else. <laughs> What are, you, what are you doing in there, dear? Making you a steak. And you get the can opener. <laughs> <laughs> it's meatloaf. It's nine Emma. lives. This will help you live longer, oh. you old whore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if she doesn't finger the asshole, she gets hit. <laughs> oh, shit. Ah, this is a new low. It really is. Sorry. Uh, Nobody's laughing. making eye contact with me. <laughs> no. You know, it's very hard now to... Uh, we're, to uh, <laughs> we're using you for really good radio, i got to be well, honest. I feel bad. I don't mean that. It's a horrible subject. My friend. It isn't, though. At the end of the day. It's true. Let's go to Dave in Tennessee. <laughs> she loves it. <laughs> Dave, what's up? Hey, Jim good morning, guys. Jim is evil today. Hey, Anthony, it's going to be a long walk of shame with Bill today. Yeah, Bill, walk with Bill. No, no, he, he, this fucker, he won't even come near me when there's 15 minutes left in the show. He starts crawling under the desk. Our I last leave. walk out, when that, that was, uh, was it, uh, not Sue, it's a schizo Bill. Yeah, schizo Bill. That was the last walk. You, I, you non-verbally said, fuck this guy. I said enough. The second the show's over, you're I dead to me. I can't fucking deal with the walk. 
where where Bill then starts commiserating or trying to commiserate with me about how awful what we talked about yeah. was. Uh, no, 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 not, not what we talked about. It was only a couple times I did it. I did it when uh, that woman was naked crawling over mouse traps. I'm yeah. a very normal fucking person. Yeah. That's very normal to, so fucking, we, to, to, to what feel that. To say? Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say. We're normal. You, you're not, though. <laughs> we're normal. No, we're not. Y you're not. You're going to be able to just, like, throw that shit out after the show. It's, it. it's done. There was a show. You leave. I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> yeah, you know, ah, she was crawling around in mouse traps. I don't know. You feel like your humanity has just gone down the shitter. And so, all right, Bill. Yeah, I'm at my car. Let's take it easy. Let's let's go to. Uh, I just want to ruin your ride home. <laughs> Is that it? It doesn't work. It does though. It, it right. does because you avoid me now. If it didn't, I don't avoid. I I, I really want to avoid you. There's definitely avoid. I'll walk with you today. You know what I do every day? You. Every day, day holding hands. Every day I just go. Well, that was Sandy. fun. I'm just move on with my life. Hands. Oh, I'm not affected at all. Well, that was I only feel bad if, if we're not mean enough. Yeah. Uh, let's go to Ryan in Chicago. Howdy, guys. How you hey. doing? Welcome aboard. Hey, up there, Chicago. We're trying to take a break here, Ryan. What do you got? I would like to ask Jimmy what it would sound like if he was going down on Bill's grandma. Uh, I don't um, know. Do you remember, uh, Jimmy? Yeah. Probably I would just what I would do is I would I would um I would slide the What did he become Michael Winslow? Pans, I would slide the pantyhose down. Yeah. And you know that sound they make when you like like she'd probably lay there like a child and I'd pull the pantyhose and her little legs as I pull no. them would lift up in the air like you pull a baby's fucking like snowsuit off. How do you know? That's what her little legs would look like as I pulled them off with her shoes still on. I, I wouldn't even take her shoes off. The news would the shoes would flop off when I pulled the fucking stockings off. Did you suck oh. on her hammer toes? Oh. <laughs> and I would fucking I'd hold her legs back, and I'd, I'd fucking, I'd open the lips. Easy, Jim. Well, no, 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 God bless her. I'd put my uh, 99 years young, and I'd put, I'd Still driving, too, by the way. Of course she this is. This is what started this Who do you thing. think picked me up and took me to the motel? Oh. <laughs> and she paid for it. Fucking the, <laughs> a threat of a good slap. <laughs> like her paying for the hotel is going to make the story worse. Yeah. I know, right? After well, everything that's been said, well, she's an old Ecuadorian's <laughs> ball bag on her face, but she paid for the hotel. You know what what a fucking whore. She's not only fragile, but she's of meager means. <laughs> <laughs> but she'll do anything for a good deep dicking. So then I open up those fucking pussy lips. It's like aristocrats all of a sudden. And I put my tongue by it and I go, fuck. <laughs> Ow. That's how I eat a pussy. Uh, let's say hi to Mike. But you know what the funny part is, Ope? Oh. Uh, she prefers it while she's on her stomach. She likes to, cause she likes the little nose tickle in the asshole while the lips the are being bippy. while the lips are being <laughs> slathered. Nose tickle in the bippy. She wants the lips to be slathered. Phil Bilber, what's going on in the glamorous confines <laughs> of a wonderful uh, New York City cab? Isn't it? Hey, remember when we voted on these, saying we didn't want them? Remember that? So they gave you a headache? No. I resent the fact that I have to touch that filthy scrape <laughs> and shut it off. Because I don't want to watch it. Because right, here we go. Here we go. Watch this. Off. There we go. Oh, but we're going to miss our, our news updates and our AccuWeather forecasts. And... I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> That's, you know, <laughs> this is what today's economy, this is what it's brought right here. This is what kind of economy we're living in. I'm literally getting interviewed in the back of a cab with a guy holding a Viewmaster like this. Am I even in camera? Have you looking to see if I'm in focus? Um, That's the thing about you. You've always been in focus in your comedy. Nice segue. Thank All you. All right. Charlie Rose here. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go. On with the questions. Is this all going to be up to me to just riff? It's broad daylight. I'm a comedian. I'm half vampire. I'm not funny I feel like with, these hours. I feel like it, with your weekly podcast, that is what you do now. Is you just riff and somehow the material is Yeah, I do. That, but, I, but I make sure I have the curtains drawn and all that type of stuff. Yeah. So you're not just one take, I, one take burr. You, no. You prep it out. You. Sometimes I am. Uh, sometimes they suck, and I have to start over again. For those of you wondering, I do a uh, podcast every Monday on my website, BillBurr.com, B-U-R-R, -R, and uh, it's also available on iTunes for free. I always say it's for free because some listeners said they found it annoying that I always mention it's for free, and I find it annoying that he brings that up. So it's my own little fuck you to one of my listeners. <laughs> I'm up to 17 at this point. And you've just automatically made this video not safe for work. Thank you. Oh, I can't. I can't say. No, that. you can. Oh, okay. I just need to tell people when they click on it. Oh, Be all right. Because if, and where, if they're where, at work, where, and where can they see this? <laughs> they can see this on the comicscomic.com. There you go. Well, actually, if and, they're watching this, they're they're already there. But you can put it up on YouTube. Or they're on YouTube. Yeah. Oh, okay. They'll probably see it on YouTube first, and then not click over. 
because they're cheap. Which bastards. means no one's watching this right now. They're just scrolling no. down, looking at everybody writing what a fucking douchebag I am. <laughs> do you do you, do you ever get material that makes it from the podcast to stage? Um. Yeah, occasionally, but a lot of it is is just me riffing on people's questions and stuff. So it's not uh, not really stand up kind of thing. You know what I mean? No, you shouldn't, because I just explained that terribly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me just want to speak vaguely and then look at you and just be like, you know what I mean? Usually you can get away with that. Most people just go, yeah, yeah, I do, I do know what you mean. But you didn't. You left, you left me in that lull. It's just more like they're talking about, you know, hey, I got a fucking house plan and a sofa, and then well, what do I do? But the people ask me really random stuff that doesn't fit into my act. Or they send me lists of things that they feel are overrated or underrated. And I don't really go off on... on uh, any of that I don't do like I don't make fun of celebrities like that like them being overrated I just make fun of certain things like shit that they do mm. it just doesn't fit in dude I don't know how many different ways I have to explain this to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna let you dig a hole that's not hard for me to do man I'm, I'm a moron so <laughs> you you mentioned uh, you mentioned over lunch that uh, you don't want to get caught up in Twitter and all the latest oh Facebook and Twitter yeah, yeah fuck all that I'm a, it's the same group of people that were on MySpace right and I jumped up and down, waved at him, tried to add as many as I can, and now they all go over to Facebook, and then when I'm supposed to run over there? That's what the cool kids do. It's the same guys, it's the same. I'm not adding the same 30,000 douchebags. <laughs> I'm staying where I'm at. If you like what I do, come. You know where I'm at, I'm on the old school MySpace. I'm not fucking chasing you all over the internet, <laughs> twittering you every five seconds. Maybe you should get off MySpace also, and then just just be at BillBurr.com. No, I like MySpace. I like it. I like MySpace, you know what? And eventually, it's all gonna come back around again to MySpace, and I'll be like, I never left. Like that old hippie, still working the farm on Woodstock. <laughs> no, truth is, uh, I'm lazy, and uh, and then the other aspect of it is, I don't like, uh, I just saw a thing at my gym where they were saying that uh, when you get on Facebook, even if you decide to get off Facebook, there's a whole bunch of your information that they don't erase. They keep it just in case you ever wanna come back, so. I figure that just means more junk mail. So I've already done that with MySpace. Why do I want to get in bed with another one of these fucking whores? So that's how all my points go, there, Sean. Now I know they start off with a little bit of momentum and then they gradually peter out. Now I know I know laziness plays no part in in the speed in which you're working on the next special because once again he does it again. You <laughs> say you can take my shit, you weave it into gold. Because you you were telling me over lunch. We had lunch together, by the way. It was magnificent. Yes, you did. That. Um, you don't really have to do a special every year, even though it seems like every it, year. No, it seems like it, it seems like everybody's trying to rush to do the next thing. Yeah, well, I think people work on their own pace, and and you shouldn't get caught up on how fast someone else is doing it. I think you should put it out there when you're ready to put it out there, but you should try to make sure it's memorable. I think if you just have one memorable special, you know what I mean, um, that you you can ride that for a while. Like people keep coming back as long as you have like new material, and. Um, it's weird, like George Carlin did one every two years and somehow he just kept having one memorable one after another, but you know, a lot of the greats will have like, you know, one, two, three, they just have that one killer one, you know, which I, I've obviously yet to have. <laughs> that's I wouldn't true. be doing an interview on a handheld whatever well, disposable can, camera in the back of a fucking cab. But that, but that's the thing about all this technology, I get the sense that some comedians feel pressured because of the way fans have access to everything on the internet that they have to come up with new material all the time I don't think you do I think uh, I, I don't think you do I'm holding on to that half of it is because I'm lazy and then the other half is like you know I don't think you you want to get to that point like where uh, I don't know if you I don't understand that Twitter thing if every five seconds I'm finding out what Ashton Kutcher's doing I don't know at some point gonna not give a fuck about him then when he finally has a movie coming out like ah oh, Jesus this guy Every five seconds with the I'm tying my sneaker shit, you know? You do left side or left? Left side, please. And yet you do know enough about it to know that Ashton Kutcher is on Twitter every five seconds. Well, why wouldn't he be? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's certain guys you just know they're on there. I mean, I thought you were going to give me shit because that's sort of a hacky reference at this point. No, it's spot on. He's my, uh, he's my updated Ben Affleck. Remember when Ben Affleck was everywhere? That's why I don't buy these celebrities when they bitch about the paparazzi because it seems like when they want to be in front of them, they're in front of them, and then all of a sudden, when they don't want to be, they're not. Sometimes.
nice to be back here down the south, man. I had a real weird experience last time I came down here. I was in Nashville, right? Sort of an awkward social situation, right? I'm sitting at this bar. There's this white dude sitting like two stools away. I don't know him. He doesn't know me. And that Terrell Owens story was in like sports news. So I try to make conversation. I'm like, man, look at this guy. This guy just signed a $40 million contract. He's already bitching, man. How much money do you need to make? And the dude looks at me. He's like, you know what I say? And then he looked over his shoulder, which I now know is the telltale sign that the N-word is coming. And it's coming hard. Oh yeah, it's not gonna be pronounced with the A, it's gonna be with the R, and he hit the R, he like stuck the landing. There was like a dismount, clan members high-fiving in the background, like doing the wave. Just out of nowhere, so now immediately I'm looking over my shoulder like, what the hell are you doing? You know what I mean? I'm waiting for like this hail of black fists to come raining down on top of me. I hate when people do stuff like that. That dude made me part of like a potential ass kicking that I had nothing to do with. You don't do shit like that. He just had that word hot potato, just threw it in my lap. Like, ah. Trying to pass it down to the next white dude. I hate when people do that, man. You know, it's like, dude, feel me out first. Ask some questions. Do you like to fish? Have you ever fucked your sister, right? start rattling off answers, then you go old school. You give me a pamphlet, you tell me about your militia. You don't just dive into it. That dude was one of the angriest people I ever met. I should have known that word was coming because he was just watching Terrell, right? Anytime I would bring up, look at man, that guy's talking trash. He would just like flip out. He won't shut up! <laughs> you know those people get like so mad they're not even looking at you? Their eyes are up. You just shut up and play the game! <laughs> You know what's funny? I don't even like Terrell, but now I love the guy. Because every time I see him talking trash, I know this idiot in Nashville is just losing his mind, like kicking over his kitchen TV. Shut the fuck up! I like violence, man. I am. I, not, not like when it happens to me or if I see it live. I like watching it on TV, you know? Watching people, you know, get attacked by animals. <laughs> just get blasted in the face or something, you know? Like, I'm a huge sports fan. You know my favorite, like, moment of, the, like, the last year was in sports? That Detroit Piston, Indiana Pacer, bench clearing brawl. Wasn't that great? That was one of the greatest things I've ever seen. I was so confused when I watched ESPN that day. They were like, that was absolutely disgraceful. Basketball fans, yeah, they just must be in there. I'm sitting there looking like, I'm a basketball fan. I loved it. I thoroughly enjoyed watching out-of-shape civilians get the shit kicked out of them by professional athletes. It was fascinating. And I think as sports fans, we kind of had it coming, right? Because how many times you go into a game, right? You got a little too drunk, you started screaming at some dude on the field who could clearly kick the shit out of you, right? If you saw him in the parking lot, you'd be like, hey, can you sign my stamp collection? I think you're awesome. You get in the game, you're all drunk, you're like, you suck, buddy! You're a piece of shit! And they're always calling him up, come on up here! No, come on up here! Well, they came up there. They did, and they kicked the shit out of everybody, it was great. It's like a cartoon. You're like beating up whole rows of people at once, like. <laughs> I loved every second. I love how Ron Artest punched the wrong guy. Wasn't that great? He taught that dude a valuable lesson in life. When shit goes down, you don't just stand there like you're watching a movie, like, wow, it's coming right at me. Must be in 3D or something. That was a five foot six inch, 110 pound white dude had an angry six foot 10 inch black dude running right at him. That had to have been in his top three nightmares all time. <laughs> right behind getting his dick cut off and being lit on fire. And he just stood there. He's like trying to explain himself. Well, I still have the liquid in my cup, so there's, there's no way I could have. He's an idiot. So I've heard a lot of shit about Connecticut. That, you know, there's, uh, you know, all that J.P. Morgan money, the Blue Bloods. The guys, you know, who, who like, they, their kids haven't worked for fucking generations. Haven't worked since, like, their, their, their initial, uh, since that meeting on Devil's Island, they haven't fucking worked. There's some clan members, higher level, no southern accents, you know, pushing the pawns around. I've heard about that. I've heard that there's a mix of Patriots and Giants fans. And then I heard that there was uh, some rough areas of Hartford. I definitely heard that. But I never heard about New Haven. So, I don't know. I figure it's, it's an Ivy League campus. I figure it's got to be cool to walk around or whatever. So anyways, I'm like, you know what? 
I know that the Yale Bulldogs play in an old stadium, just like, yeah, I, I want to go look at it. So I looked it up on Wikipedia and said the Yale Bowl, they're claiming is actually the original bowl in this country. And that all the other bowls looked at that bowl and said, wow, we want to build one too. And that's how you got the Rose Bowl, the fucking Cotton Bowl, and all those other bowls. And, that's, and then from that, they took the name Bowl for the bowl games, because they all played in those fucking stadiums. And then from there, the Super Bowl took the bowl name from that. So it all goes back to this. So I'm like, well, fuck me, i got to go see this thing. So I look on my map, my little Google Maps. I see it's a mile and a half away. I hate going to the fucking gym, right? I had my banana and apple for breakfast. I'll go fucking full of fiber. I'll go take a walk down to the Yale Bowl. Go check this motherfucker out. It's a mile and a half away. I'm in an Ivy League. I'm on an Ivy League campus. This, this, how can I go wrong, right? <clears throat> I got about two blocks in. There's that amazing thing where you suddenly, as a white person, realize that you're walking into the hood. There's those subtle signs, you know, that make you nervous. First thing you see is a, probably a check cashing place. You know what I mean? Funeral home. Baptist Church, you know, less white people, and you start going, fuck. And I'm thinking, well, it's only a mile and a half away. How bad can it fucking get? Plus, it's during the day. So I never had a problem during the day. During the day, it's the regular people. It's at night, right around 7 o'clock. I've always said when that second shift comes out, the hustlers, the zombies, and all that fucking shit, that's when you don't want to be there. But, uh, you know, you might catch a couple of those guys coming home late. You know what I mean? So I'm fucking walking through there, and uh, i got to admit, I got about six blocks in, and I was waiting... I felt like I was in an episode of The Wire, like I was waiting for Omar Ayo, to come walking by with his fucking gun. It was crazy. I also figured out why black people walk so slow when they're walking down the street. I get it. Because when you walk slow, you look like you're not nervous. Okay? If you're walking fast like I was, you look like either a, a, a narc or a fucking victim. You look like you're scared. People just were staring out of just my fucking red face. I think I'm, I, I really freaked out a lot of people because there was not, nobody down there that looked like me. So I finally got through all this fucking shit. And I get down to the Yale Bowl because I want to look at this thing, thinking it's going to look like the one at Harvard, right? That's basically a ripoff of, uh, what is that place over there in, in Italy? What, yeah, the, the place where they threw all the Christians to the lions. And that fat guy who was balding. And he'd do the thumbs up, thumbs down. It wasn't Pontius Pilate. He took out the hippie. Julius Caesar? Who the fuck was it? The Roman Colosseum. So I thought it was going to look like that. So I show up to this thing. It's dug into the fucking ground. All I can see is these entrances and that have gates in front of them, and above them is just grass. I couldn't see a fucking thing. So then I had to turn around, and I had to walk right back through the hood. And I was way less nervous the second time because I knew with each step I was getting closer to my hotel. It's weird how that works. Then I started looking around and people looked a lot more friendlier because I was a lot less nervous. And you know what? I think that's one to grow on. <laughs> and you know what's funny is uh, I actually want to go to a, a, a Harvard-Yale game in, uh, at the Yale Bowl. I want to do that because uh, I started thinking about how many future presidents sat in the Yale Bowl, or at least candidates. You know what I mean? George W. Bush was in there, as was that other fucking guy that ran against him in 2004, John Kerry. You know what I mean? They might have done keg stands together. So I just want to look at drunk kids out there and be like, maybe someday that's going to be my guy who's allegedly my leader. You know? And maybe in the Harvard-Yale game when they're not giving each other shit and throwing their hankies at each other, I can actually hear, you know, about the next Illuminati meeting. Hey, you know, I'm always bitching about the population problem and how they never fucking bring it up in the presidential campaigns. You know what I think they bring it up? I think they bring it up when that, that Bilderberg group gets together. I think they talk about the real problems. You know, when they all get together and be like, all right, what is the most, what is the easiest way to get 7 billion down to 500 million? You know what I mean? As they sit there eating like fucking lobsters and shit. <clears throat> then who fucking serves them? I bet, they, I bet when, you, when you're a waiter for them, when you come walking into that, that group, when you bring in whatever, their fucking escargot and all that shit. I bet they all just shut the fuck up the second you come in or they pull down some different map. And if you accidentally see something like uh, that you're never heard from again. 
Am I slowly losing my mind? I don't fucking know. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. But oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I got. Oh, Jesus. 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 The year of our Lord. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, gee. Oh, Jesus. Jesus is flying by. It's destroying her relationship with Christ. Oh, Jesus. 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 Oh, G and Zuz. Oh, Jesus. 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 Jesus there. And oh, Jesus. Ah, Jesus. Cock blocked by Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. And all of a sudden, I heard my, uh, my old juice sauce going, oh, Jesus. Oh, juice. Got bubbling over there. I was like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, ah, then I'd fuck it up. This might be my favorite name of anything I've ever advertised here, uh, other than one white Charlie's. Uh, Sherry's Berries. It says, insert story when you've given or received uh, the gifts. Well, I, I've been out of town. I haven't gotten Sherry's Berries yet. Ever. All right, Sherry's Berries. Since the end of the, the year is all about delicious holiday food. Why not send an extra special holiday treat to friends, family, business associates, associates, everyone you know. I've never met a person who didn't love Sherry's Berries. Send giant dip strawberries from Sherry's Berries for only $19.99. That's over a 40% savings. Go to berries.com, click on the microphone, and type in Burr, B-U-R-R. For my listeners, double the berries for just $10 more. Berries are terrific. And a sweet holiday gift. They also have delicious products such as Christmas cake pops, cheesecakes, and dipped pretzels. Here's the only way to get this special 1999 Sherry's Berries offer. <laughs> Call 866-FRUIT. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> what the fuck am I selling? <laughs> Did I approve this? This is fucking ridiculous. Who the fuck is going to buy this shit? This is the funniest shit I've ever seen in my fucking life. Christmas cake pops, cheesecakes, and dipped pretzels. Call 866-FRUIT, everybody. <laughs> Eight, I'm sorry, 866-FRUIT-0-2. Or even better, <laughs> visit berries.com. <laughs> oh, punch truck. Oh, please spell out the words. Oh, by all means, berries, B-E-R-R-I-E-S, berries. Click on the microphone in the top right corner and type in burr. <laughs> you got to see these enormous berries for yourself. <laughs> Go, I swear to God, this is the copy. Go to berries.com, click on the microphone, and tip in burr. Type in burr. Dip your balls and dip your berries in that. Don't wait now. Order. Order some chocolate berries for the fucking person in your life. Oh, shit. I needed that. That was wonderful. I'm sure I'll get some complaints on that one. We need a conference call. Can't do it. I'm in Helsinki. Hey, you cunts better buy some Sherry's Berries because I'm going to get in trouble with that fucking read. And I'm not changing it because that was hilarious. Um, oh, wiping tears away here. Um, <laughs> and I, my apologies to berries.com. I, I, didn't, I didn't look at the copy before I read that. This is... I'm too fucking immature to read shit like that. I'm sure you have wonderful chocolate-covered berries. All right? <laughs> this might be my favorite name of anything I've ever advertised here, uh, other than one white Charlie's. Uh, Sherry's Berries. It says, insert story when you've given or received uh, the gifts. Well, I, I've been out of town. I haven't gotten Sherry's Berries yet. Ever. All right, Sherry's Berries. 
Since the end of the, the year is all about delicious holiday food, why not send an extra special holiday treat to friends, family, business associates, associates, everyone you know. I've never met a person who didn't love Sherry's Berries. Send giant dipped strawberries from Sherry's Berries for only $19.99. That's over a 40% savings. Go to berries.com, click on the microphone, and type in Burr, B-U-R-R. For my listeners, double the berries for just $10 more. Berries are terrific and a sweet holiday gift. They also have delicious products such as Christmas cake pops, cheesecakes, and dipped pretzels. Here's the only way to get this special 1999 Sherry's Berries offer. <laughs> Call 866-FRUIT. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> what the fuck am I selling? <laughs> Did I approve this? This is fucking ridiculous. Who the fuck is going to buy this shit? This is the funniest shit I've ever seen in my fucking life. Christmas cake pops, cheesecakes, and dipped pretzels. Call 866-FRUIT, everybody. <laughs> Eight, I'm sorry, 866-FRUIT-0-2. Or even better, <laughs> visit berries.com. <laughs> oh, punch truck. Oh, please spell out the words. Oh, by all means, berries, B-E-R-R-I-E-S, berries. Click on the microphone in the top right corner and type in burr. <laughs> you got to see these enormous berries for yourself. Go, I swear to God, this is the copy. Go to berries.com, click on the microphone, and tip in burr. Type in burr. Dip your balls and dip your berries in that. Don't wait now. Order. Order some chocolate berries for the fucking person in your life. Oh, shit. I needed that. That was wonderful. I'm sure I'll get some complaints on that one. We need a conference call. Can't do it. I'm in Helsinki. Hey, you cunts better buy some Sherry's berries because I'm going to get in trouble with that fucking read, and I'm not changing it because that was hilarious. Um... Oh, wiping tears away here. Um. <laughs> and I, my apologies to berries.com. I, I, didn't, I didn't look at the copy before I read that. This, I'm too fucking immature to read shit like that. I'm sure you have wonderful chocolate-covered berries. All right? 